What's up guys, it's Alex and I'm back for a new video. Today we're gonna to be talking about something a little bit different and I'm so excited because it's gonna be about food. And I could talk about food for hours, but today I'm gonna to be specifically talking about how my diet has changed since I first moved to the United States, as well as what I do these days to stay in touch with the food that I grew up with back home. So if that sounds interesting to you, then I would love to have you keep watching so that you can tell me what you thought at the end of this video. So today's video was actually suggested to me by my sister, Alicia, and I just thought it was absolutely genius when she shared this idea with me because I think food is one of the strongest ways that we as international students and travelers in general stay connected with home when we're far away. I mean, it's a great way to recreate the smells in the kitchen that you grew up with, to recreate the actual recipes and dishes that your mom or your loved one used to make for you when you were growing up. And at the same time, it's also been a great way for me to connect with people that I meet here in the US while I'm far from home. Sharing my food with people that I meet here has been a great way for me to feel like I'm representing my cultures and my countries while I'm abroad. Um, and it's also a great way to connect with other people from my countries and cultures who are right here in the US, missing home just like I am. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how my diet has changed over time since I first moved here in 2012. And then I'm gonna give you guys a little tour of my kitchen so that you can kind of get a glimpse of my grocery shopping habits, as well as to see the kinds of food that I eat. Now, before we move on, I have a small announcement to make. This week is going to be the last week where you're gonna be seeing irregularly posted videos for me on this channel. So you guys have been really great so far about staying tuned, even though I haven't been posting a consistent schedule of videos. But starting next week onwards, I'm gonna be showing two videos a week one is going to be about advice, practical advice for international students, and one is going to be more like this, where we talk about general life in the US, my food habits, my culture shock experiences. At the same time, I'm here to make content that's exciting for you guys, so please let me know in the comments if you would like to see more videos like this that just generally talks about life in the US, or if you would like to see more videos giving practical advice. I'm happy to adjust according to what you guys wanna see, so please let me know what you're thinking. For now, let's get back to food. So I first moved to the US back in 2012, and you guys might know that by now if you've been watching my videos. The first place I lived in in the US was New Mexico, and I was attending a small international boarding school to finish my last two years of high school. And I actually did not have a lot of control over my diet when I first moved here for two reasons. The first reason is because we had one dining hall where we had all of our meals at school, and I usually went three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And all of the meals that we had in the cafeteria came from a catering company that the school worked with. And you kind of just ate whatever they were serving that time of day. The second reason is because we lived in a very dry area. And I think the school, if I remember correctly, had a history of fire accidents. If anybody from my high school is watching, let me know in the comments what it was, why this was a thing. But so I think to kind of keep students safe, they removed all of the burners from the stove tops of all of our kitchens and our dorms. So we couldn't actually use our kitchens normally. We couldn't use the stoves. So I couldn't really cook even if I wanted to. I mean, we had a microwave. So all that meant was a lot of Indomie, a lot of instant food. And if you were desperate for more normal food, um, I remember I tried boiling pasta in a microwavable bowl in the microwave. The cafeteria was pretty standard college student food, even though it was a high school. There was a salad bar, there was always a hot dish each time of day. So during breakfasts and brunches, you would always find like eggs or sausages, um, typical breakfast food, yogurt. The salad bar was mainly there for lunch and dinner and it was always like lettuce, you know, uh, raw mushrooms, as well as a soda fountain. Now, all of these things were not new to me because in Singapore, you know, you could get soda anywhere. Salad is, I think, a very universal thing. So I wasn't shocked by any of the food that we were being served, but I was shocked by the way it was being served. For example, our soda fountain was accessible three times a day. That meant that you could have Coke, Pepsi, Sprite at 7 a.m. in the morning if you should so choose to. And I could not understand that. It was just something that you would never see in Singapore, something that you would never see in your school in Singapore. Singapore, I think, is known for being very health conscious, especially growing up in school there. The fact that you had the option to have soda in the morning here, I felt was very American. 
American. <laughs> Let me know if you think otherwise. This is an open discussion. Salad, again, is very easy to find in Singapore, but I wouldn't say that it's a staple, but here it felt like salad was the way for you to get your serving of vegetables. Back home, we cook vegetables. We cut them up, we season them, we fry them, we boil them, we turn them into a soup. I think here it was the other way around. The salad was the main thing, and then the cooked vegetables were kind of the rare opportunities where you could eat vegetables in other ways. Again, let me know if you think otherwise, but this was my impression. Even though we were being fed three times a day, we also had opportunities to go to the grocery store to kind of buy snacks if we wanted to. And I think when you first do grocery shopping in the US and you've never been to the US before, it can be a really exciting experience. I remember being particularly amazed by how many instant products there were. I used to bake a lot in Singapore and one thing that caught my eye immediately was the instant cookie dough. The fact that you could just buy ready-made cookie dough and pop it in the oven and then in a matter of minutes have ready to go chocolate chip cookies. It was like I could avoid all of the work that my friends and I used to put into our baking sessions and have the same end result much quicker. The other product that I also really remember being struck by for some reason is these uh, box of brownies that you could buy at Walmart. So it was just like brownies with M&Ms baked into them. And I'm not talking about a brownie mix that came with M&Ms for you to put into your brownie mix. I'm not talking about brownies from the bakery section. I'm talking about brownies with M&Ms already baked in a cardboard box that you could get from the shelf of dried goods. And to me, that was just really exciting at first. So I would say that overall, my diet changed drastically when I first came here because there was just an increased exposure to sugary products like I'd never seen before. There was also an exposure to uh, fried and oily foods, but I was never really attracted to that to begin with. So that really didn't affect my diet as much as sugar did. I used to buy a lot of M&Ms and gummy bears and Hershey's Kisses. At the same time, I was 17 years old. It was my first time doing grocery shopping on my own, unsupervised. I didn't have my mom next to me to tell me what was healthy and what wasn't healthy. So I had an insane amount of freedom over what I bought. But really all it took was one semester of shopping like crazy for me to feel like I never wanted to do that again because by the end of that first semester I noticed a huge change in my health. I had a lot of stomach problems that I had never had in Singapore. I got toothaches from all the sugar. So really by the end of that first semester, December 2012, I decided I never wanted to spend on that much sugar ever again. But also because I was a 17 year old student in a foreign country, didn't have a lot of money with me. So wanting to save the little that I had was extra motivation to avoid unnecessarily spending on sugar. When I moved to Minnesota, I had a lot more control over my diet because we had kitchens in our dorms that had burners on top of the stove so I could use the kitchens normally. It was almost as if this feeling had been suppressed for the past two years and now I was just kind of relieved that I was able to have access to tools so that I could recreate dishes from home. I didn't realize how much much I wanted to feel that kitchen connection to home. Now, of course, I'm in Boston doing my master's degree. And even though my degree program is what drew me to the city, I also specifically wanted to be in Boston because of the easier access to international cuisines. I mean, there's Chinatown here, which I love because I have my access to dim sum now. But even so, as much as possible, I prefer cooking. I think over the years, because it's just so easy to find processed, prepackaged food, I've become so much more conscious of my diet as an adult. Whenever I can, I try to cook food from home. So I'll try to find spices in the grocery stores that help me recreate dishes from home. The most recent thing I did was make hot which is like this Cantonese crystal shrimp dumplings that look kind of like this. I love doing that. Just thinking about a dish that I miss from home and then challenging myself to learn the recipe. It's a great way to stay connected to home, but also to keep learning new recipes and to create new memories in the kitchen, as cheesy as that sounds. The other thing is when I get the chance to go home to Singapore or to the Netherlands, I'll make sure to stock up on foods that I really like and can't get in the US. Something that easily makes me feel at home is hachelslag, which is these chocolate sprinkles from the Netherlands that we eat on our bread there. And until today, no matter where I am in the US, as soon as I take a bite of that bread with the hachelslag in it and the smell oozing out, I instantly feel like I'm at home with my dad or in the Netherlands with my Oma. And if I ever forget to stock up on food while I'm home, don't worry, my mom won't let me leave the country without stocking up my suitcase with all kinds of seasoning packets and hot chocolate packets from home, so much so that my clothes won't fit in there. Milo is something that I can easily stock up on when I go home in Singapore because you can just buy those big plastic packets that have multiple packets in them. 
Milo has been one of the easiest ways for me to make friends in the US with other international students because apparently it's all over the world. I have friends from Nigeria, from Ghana, from all over Asia, from Australia, even from Austria and other parts of Europe who have told me that they grew up with Milo. I remember I used to give my Milo packets out to all of my friends. It was just a great way to connect with people and then after a while I was like, I need to save these. If I'm really craving food from home and I just can't find the ingredients that I need or I just don't have the energy to cook, once in a while I'll also order food through delivery services, which I didn't have the option to do as much before I moved to Boston because I used to live in smaller towns, but here in Boston it's a city so I can easily order from my favorite Chinese restaurant in Chinatown if I want to. I can also get sushi without having to worry about where the fish is coming from because now I live on the coast, which is another reason why I wanted to move to Boston. Of course, nothing will ever compare to food from home, but I am still grateful to be in a more international city in the US now. So enough talking about how my diets changed. Let me give you guys a quick tour of what my kitchen looks like so that you can kind of get a glimpse of my grocery shopping habits today and to kind of see what the kitchen of a Dutch, Indonesian, Singaporean girl living in the US looks like. So I'm gonna show you guys what I have in my cabinet. I live here with three other people. A lot of this kitchen space is shared, a lot of cabinet space is shared. I also haven't gone grocery shopping properly in a while because I was away for a few weeks, but I think what we have in here will still reflect my overall shopping habits. Salt and pepper, because they kind of go with everything. I really like this pink Himalayan salt. It's been my favorite so far. Peanut butter, just a nice staple as a student. You're seeing all of my American things right now. This is my guilty pleasure. Uh, this is the one one sugary thing I still hold on to unapologetically. Olive oil, always a staple. Bread, which goes really well with Hafelslag, which is the Dutch chocolate sprinkles that we put on our bread. I know I just talked all about sugar in the US, but this is the one thing that makes me feel at home any time of day. Pasta, because as a student, this is really cheap and also a great way to eat well if you use the right ingredients. Not one but two bags of jasmine rice because jasmine rice is the bomb. These I have so many different packets of in my cabinet. Um, it's Japanese, I don't know what it's called in English, but essentially it's like dried seaweed that you can put over your rice. Japanese viewers, if you know what this is called, please explain this properly because I'm not doing a good job explaining what this is. These are some uh, seasoning packets that my mom will not let me leave. Singapore without, but they're just seasoning packets to help me recreate some classic Indonesian dishes while I'm here in the US. This is seasoning for rendang, which is a spicy beef dish, and there are so many different ways to make it. Um, this is for nasi kuning. This yellow rice dish is really famous back home. This is for nasi goreng, which is fried rice, but an Indonesian style fried rice. Finally, I also have this Chinese tea that my mom does a great job of filling up my suitcase with, so much so that I don't have room for clothes when I leave Singapore. And then over here we have some spices. A lot of the things I started using here in the US, a lot of things I try to use to feel more at home. Chili powder, something I started using in the US. Oregano leaves specifically because my mom used to use oregano when she would make pasta. Red chili flakes, uh, something I also discovered in the US. Sesame seeds, something we did have in Singapore, but I bought specifically because I like to make soba noodles with sesame seeds. Curry powder, cumin. I also use this when I make curry dishes, but also specifically Indonesian vegetable dishes paprika powder, something I started using in the US. Something I discovered in the US, garlic powder. And then if you come over here, soy sauce, because I cook a lot of um, kinds of Asian cuisines here. This is just something you kind of have to have. I realize it's a bit difficult to try to condense eight years worth of eating habits into one video. So I'd be happy to keep making more videos on different aspects of my diet if you guys want to see content like that. Let me know in the comments below if so. But I hope that this video was a nice glimpse into what the diet of a Singaporean Dutch Indonesian girl living in the US looks like at 25. At the same time, I would also love to hear from you guys. How has your diet changed since you moved here? What are your eating habits like? Do you cook more? Do you order in more? What was relatable for you in this video? And what's your favorite dish to cook from back home while you're living abroad? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And of course, if you enjoyed what you saw today, please give this video a quick thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for more videos like this. Thank you again so much, guys. I hope you're all doing well right now and staying safe. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.